You go to your, your platform, they attack this person, attack this pastor, this pastor. They are, you are attacking a man, not knowing you are turning away people from the body of Christ. Now I hear people say, oh, oh, all these things Dr. Damina is saying, he's bringing division to the body of Christ. What is the body of Christ? Dr. Ebe Damina has replied Apostle Joseph Suleiman and others that normally say that Ebe Damina is attacking the body of Christ. According to him, he said that there is nothing like body of Christ. That God does not have body. That Christ has no body. Please, I want you guys to watch the video. I will be back. Thank you. When you attack Bishop David Oyedepo, you attack Papa Deboye. You are not attacking them. Those men cannot come down again. You are turning away people from the body of Christ. People, I saw a young girl in Abuja. She was all covered. A Muslim. I know you. He said, yeah, she was a member of the choir. As you left that church you were in, he said, yes, I'm tired. Yes, sir, I'm tired. And she left. My heart broke. You think it's these ministers you're attacking? They can't come down. You can't pull them. These are ministers of God. The only person you can pull down is someone who is not called by God. Is someone who does not have God's hand upon him. Do you know what they have done to me? Do you know what they have done to me? Do you know the things they have said about me? It's nothing to me. Anybody who believes it, good luck. God bless you. I'm moving on with the assignment God has given me. I'm not interested in what people say or don't say. But the people, they are turning away from the body of Christ. You are attacking a man. Not knowing you are turning away people from the body of Christ. People are living Christianity. The man you are attacking is still standing. So what are you doing? Are you working for God or the devil? Don't join that group. When someone up and walk away. Say, don't pollute my spirit. I want to know what only God tells me. And I pray one prayer for you. You will not miss heaven. You will not be deceived with seducive words. Seductive statements. By power of oratory. Power of diction. Mastery of public speaking. And you become coward. Become manipulated into hate and bitterness. And everyone who is a victim of bitterness. Today I speak your deliverance. I decree God we exit bad company from your life. God we exit bad company. That God heals your heart. I don't know what the church has done to you. Maybe you have been offended. I understand. But God heal your heart. God heal your heart. God heal your heart. God heal your heart. God, heal your heart. I have the time to come out on social media to expose Pastor Ebedamina's biblical errors. Because you see, one of the ways Ebedamina is trying to bamboozle some of his hardens, some of his followers, some of his disciples, is by just, just by being vocal. Listen to me very carefully. It's not by whose pastor is more vocal. If one of the ways, let me use the word, some pastors tend to deceive people is because by this bold declaration bold speaking someone can be teaching very silently and teaching the truth why someone can be shouting and jumping on the altar and teaching heresies you know why we dishonor fathers in our generation is because ourselves don't have any track record many young people my age they come on facebook and they are challenging bishop david Uedeku. some of the ministries you celebrate did the greatest damage to christianity in nigeria you are not aware if you are placed on the scale with him, God will choose him and forget you. A son of doctrine. They have not labeled in that scripture to know that it was a different civilization that was advertising. In 1979, Bishop Oedeko called for three days fast for Nigeria. You started praying for Nigeria in 2015. You are talking and talking down on him. So someone has the capacity to build an edifice. That's not what God will, will check. He will check the people he's raising. That is the effort, that is his spiritual effort, and that is the sum total of the worth of his priesthood. Then you now see people that are not devoted to Jesus inside the building. And he's using the building as a means of talking about his status in the body of Christ. We lost it long time ago. Why we dishonor fathers in our generation is because ourselves don't have any track record. If you have a track record, you'll be careful who you talk to. Many young people my age, they come on Facebook and they are challenging Bishop David Oedeku are you talking to you can vanish from this generation there will be no nobody we know everything you have done a thousand times can vanish inside of his own record if you are placed on the scale with him god will choose him and forget you in 1979 bishop wedeko called for three days fast for nigeria you started praying for nigeria in 2015 and then you stand up today because you have preached in enugu and newi you now say ah, these people don't know what they are saying <laughs> you are a novice. 
you are about to fall into the condemnation of the devil most of what you celebrated for the past 25 years in the body of christ you celebrated babylon oh someone has the capacity to build an edifice that's not what god will, will check he will check the people he's raising that is the effort that is his spiritual effort and that is the sum total of the worth of his priesthood then you will now see people that are not devoted to jesus inside the building and he's using the building as a means of talking about his status in the body of christ we lost it long time ago we don't measure ministerial success by crowd we don't measure ministerial success by car influence and affluence we are not businessmen and we are not politicians this generation is sick all we are into is who is big who is huge look at the crowd numbers that is what we are sick about 40 years ago my friend dr michael bassett of blessed memory said to me we went to have breakfast in Hampstead, and he said nick the name of the game today is numbers don't forget Nick. He said the name of the game is numbers. It's not just about the souls. It's all about the numbers. Because the numbers bring the money. And the numbers bring recognition, attention, relevance, and acceptance. When you have the numbers, people don't care how you got it. Everybody runs to you. And you become the biggest thing in town. The name of the game, don't forget, is numbers. Ministerial success is measured by soundness in doctrine. And when you start teaching people sound doctrine, even if they are four and they grow in the knowledge of Christ, you're successful. That's why Jesus said his church is where two are. That's the church of Jesus. That's the church of Jesus. Two or three gathered in my name, I'm there. That's the church of Jesus. But you know, we human beings, we, we have brought worldliness into the church. So we use the yardstick that unbelievers use to measure success. We brought it into the house of God. Which is why some young pastors are under pressure. And some of them go to native doctors to collect things and use it to be pulling crowd. I was telling somebody the other day that even if I have my way, I will remove that archbishop. Hey. Listen, my focus is not about position, it's not about title, it's not about office. Dolami Kaduma Di Kasa. I want to be on fire, even in my old age. I want to be on fire for the Lord. Hey. Don't respect a man of God because of his cars. You respect him because of what is coming out of his mouth. You check his doctrinal weight. That's what determines respect. It's not the crowd. It's not the houses and the cars. Those are not the things that make ministry. Does he have more houses than Elon Musk? Have you heard of Elon Musk? They are going to, the, to, to Mars to go and build a planet. They are moving. They said this earth. Too many poor people everywhere. They, the rich, they want to change address where only people like them can live. And it's no more on earth. It's at Mars. I'm not joking. When people have too much money and don't know God, they want to go to heaven and meet God. Yes, they want to go to Mars. Because it's earth. Too many poor people everywhere. Let's go to mass where we only see people like us. So if success in ministry is by wealth, no pastor is successful. Because no pastor is as rich as these guys I'm calling their names. Is it Zuckerberg? Those guys are controlling nations. They are controlling nations, world economies. They call them the big tech. Even American government is crying in their hands. They are crying in the hands of these big tech guys. Twitter, Facebook. They are crying because those guys are too rich. They are so rich that they can they can tamper with the configuration of your nation. They can determine what happens to you to your Nigerian election. They can tamper with anywhere. Big tech. Yet these guys don't care about Christ. They're not interested in Christ. So if ministerial success is money and cars and houses, let me tell you, the most carnal man on earth is a man that respects a man of God because of his wristwatch and his suit and his car. You are as carnal as carnality can be. Real spirituality is to respect men that labor. Bible says they that labor in word and doctrine deserve double honor. Then he says esteem them highly for their work's sake, not for their car's sake. That's why preachers feel when you just have big cars, you know, big cars, and you have bodyguards, you have escort and pilot cars. When you enter everywhere, as you're coming out, your protocol, they're pushing everybody down, pushing everybody down, so that the man of God can come out. The man of God. And then you see him feeling cool, as they're pushing people down. The same people you're supposed to disciple and build up, they're pushing them down, and you're happy if it was in the days of paul when paul will enter a place and people are kneeling down to greet him he kneels and says stand up we are not gods we are your brothers mama and i went to zimbabwe you remember as soon as we arrived zimbabwe they took us from the airport to the church service was holding like this as we arrived in front of the church everybody knelt down 
I asked mama, what is that? Mama said, let's be watching. Everybody protocol, ushers, everybody's on their knees. So, I'm not comfortable with it. I don't, I don't understand this kind of thing. We are not slave masters. Anyway, I'm watching. As we approach the front of the church door like this, the whole church saw mama and I. Everybody knelt down. I told the pastor, no, no, I'm not used to this. What's this? He said, no, that's how we do it here. When they see a man of God, they must kneel down. No, tell them to stand up. This man of God can only operate if they can stand up. If they are not standing up, having done all to stand. So if they cannot stand, we can't teach them. But you know, some men of God will feel cool. Kneel down well, kneel down well, kneel down well. Kneel down well, my son. Kneel down well. You are kneeling down until your body is shaking because you are tired. The man is still telling you, kneel down, my son. Kneel what? Kneel what? That's not honor. That's not honor because a man can kneel down and be abusing you, idiot, nonsense. She is punk, punky. Real honor is from the heart and it is honor for the word. You didn't hear what I said. Real honor is from the heart and it is honor for what? The word. You're honoring the man because of the word that is coming out of him to shape your life. Ah, okay, if you, if you are flabbergasted by my car, how does my car add value to your spirituality? How does the car I drive add anointing to you? Why are you shaking that a man of God came with a limousine? Why? It's all this prosperity gospel that brought all that nonsense. And it tampered with priority. So that the church people, God's people, don't know what to honor men of God for anymore. So they honor us as if they're honoring politicians. We are not politicians. That's what happened in the body of Christ in Nigeria for the past 25 years. We celebrated people that should be cast out. Some of the ministries you celebrate did the greatest damage to Christianity in Nigeria. You are not aware. You are not a son of doctrine. You have not labeled in that scripture to know that it was a different civilization that was advertising. People are desperate because they have told them ministerial success is car and house. Let me be honest. Listen to me, every one of you. When I came into ministry, pastors were not anything to talk about. It, to even marry, if anybody agreed to give you their daughter, is the grace of God. Because when I joined ministry, the best of pastors were using bicycles. Most were trekking. There were not many pastors that had car. So I didn't come into ministry for money and fame and popularity. I came into ministry with a raw passion to teach people the word of God and help people. That's all that brought me to ministry. That's all. And I didn't join ministry at old age. I entered ministry as a young boy with all my potentials to be as successful as anybody in the secular. But I chose to consecrate that for ministry. That's why when I see the truth of the gospel, it doesn't take me a day to make my youth turn. Because I'm not in this thing for anything ulterior. I'm in this thing for the truth of it. It's not about houses and cars. What is the body of Christ? Which one is the body of Christ? You think all the churches is the body of Christ? <laughs> churches are not the body of Christ. Though. <laughs> Before Jesus came, there were churches. There were churches before Jesus came. And that's why when he showed up, he said, I will build my church. He didn't say, I will build a church. Because there are churches, but now I'm going to build my own. So in the midst of churches, there is a body of Christ somewhere. <laughs> you know, Pentecostal think Catholics are not the body of Christ. <laughs> and Catholics think Protestants are not the body of Christ. Methodists think Anglican are not the body of Christ. That the body of Christ is only Methodists. And Anglicans think Anglicans are the body of Christ. Methodists are not. You know? So, because of that, we, 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 we don't even know what the body of Christ is. The body of Christ is not a physical building. The body of Christ is not physical human beings. The body of Christ is a spiritual or organism. A, or a spiritual, a, a spiritual being. That came out of his resurrection. That's the body. Watch. Jesus said, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. And on the third day he raised it up. So the body of Christ is in the resurrection. That means anybody that has not received the resurrection of Christ as a reality in his life, he's not the body of Christ. You can go to church but you're not the body of Christ. You are not in the body of Christ till you have accepted his resurrection. So, the body of Christ are those individuals put together who have accepted the message of his resurrection. So, which means 
if a man is not preaching the resurrection he is not in the body of christ he's an enemy of the body of christ watch till we all come in the unity of the faith so what is the unity of the faith is not gathering churches together the unity of the faith is the knowledge of the son of god that's the unity of the faith the knowledge of the son of god the knowledge of christ is where we have unity of faith where everybody's preaching christ crucified Christ raised from the dead. When all of us are preaching that message, we are in the unity of faith. Not that I'm preaching the resurrection, you're preaching generational causes. There's no unity of faith. That's fighting of the faith. I'm preaching this resurrection, you're preaching family patterns. I'm preaching the resurrection, you're preaching uh, 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 um, uh, portals and dimensions and depth and heights. We are preaching resurrection. You are there busy emphasizing village, village, village altars. Sending for sand from your village. I heard they bring sand from Africa to London. Eh? I hear it's much. Our governments will start having, they have to start charging for sand. That's another source of income. How can you come to London? <laughs> How can you come to civilization and go back to Africa to bring sand? Your own colonization <laughs> is beyond <laughs> is beyond redemption. How can you be in London and you're still tied in a village? <laughs> Not you. <laughs> So I, I was teaching in church just a few years back. Just before mm. COVID, I was teaching on the ego, and I made this assertion that I've been hearing for at least thirty years. The eagle is the highest flying bird in the world. The next day, the church member sent a text message to Pastor Nick and said, I, "I know I don't have the right to correct Pastor Sam, but he said something in church yesterday that the eagle is the highest flying bird in the world." That statement is not correct. As she was saying it, I was on my phone checking on Google. The person was right. The eagle doesn't even come within the first ten. <laughs> I went back to church and I apologized. <laughs> I told them, God bless you. This one of you said, I checked it up. That's why we need to allow younger people in, into leadership, honestly. Because God bless we don't realize you, you say something now that you said Sam. before and nobody would even bother to swallow it. They are checking on Google as you are saying it. And now they are seeing hypocrisy. That's why people are leaving. God the bless you. Again, because time. people are holding their ground. The leaders Pastor are holding Sam. their ground. What did you mean? And these young people have gone to check. All those uh, in the original Greek that you were saying before, because nobody understood Greek. If they go <laughs> online now, they will get the correct <laughs> meaning of what you're saying. They're seeing a lot God of people. God bless you over and over They want authenticity. Again, and uh, this is just a call on all of us to practice leadership with honesty and nobody says leadership we with people honesty. Don't expect us to be perfect but they want us to be perfectly honest when i when i owned up to that error on the ego then i was getting text messages and emails and people were saying wow thank you for doing that i never thought a pastor could do that to come back and, and admit that they were wrong people just want that authenticity and they also want accountability shalom child of god welcome back my people new subscribers thank you so much for joining me returning once i appreciate your support Thank you so much, I'm grateful. I really understand what Apostle Joseph Suleiman is saying here. But the problem here is this. Dr. Albert Amina normally corrects errors. Errors in that our body of Christ. You know you guys say body of Christ. I normally say that there's nothing like body of Christ. And Albert Amina has said it now. You see this thing we guys are doing. There's nothing like body of Christ. Okay? There's nothing like body of Christ in nigeria there's nothing like body of christ in africa there's nothing like body of christ in america because in the pentecostal church worldwide because what you guys are doing is not christianity if there is body of christ body of christ can never have bitterness in body of christ you will not see anger and jealousy in the body of christ you will never see wickedness in the body of Christ, you never see competition. You guys are doing competition. Everything, business. Why is it if you claim that you guys have body of Christ? Why is it that Pastor Paul 
and Pastor Peter cannot preach on the same pulpit, cannot be in the same church, serve in the same church for 20 years or 30 years together without having issue or without uh, Paul saying, no, I want to go and open my own church. Apollos, this, this and that. Paul, this, Apollos, waters. Why are you guys not practicing it? Bible recorded that the disciples of Jesus, they were in one accord and they did exploit because of oneness. But in my own generation, it's a generation where pastors don't want to be in oneness. And they stick, they claim that they, they have body of Christ. Sir, there is nothing like body of Christ. Until you guys come together, now unite, have one spirit and one mind. You see all this thing that is going on on social media? This pastor attacked this, attacked that. It's because of bitterness and jealousy. Because you guys are doing it as business. If you guys are doing it for humanity and you know that you are serving God, you will be, you know, be jealous of each other. If I preach nonsense, you call me in the secret. All pastors have their telephone, normally have their telephone number and their contact uh, details. You can reach out to me. You know how to reach out to me. Or they should have organization. They should have body. This and they say can. This kind of a thing, they're not working. Yeah, well, if, the, if that can is working, they're supposed to ban pastor, correcting pastor on social media. It's wrong. Using your pulpit to address another pastor's message or anything is wrong. You don't do that. It's wrong. If you guys are in oneness, if there is anything like body of Christ, what you have to do is to reach out to that body. Is can, rather. In Nigeria, Pentecostal Association of 18. You guys are supposed to have it. In Nigeria, in any way, all the parts of the world. If I preach nonsense, you reach out to me through that platform. If you couldn't find me, if you couldn't reach out to me personally, you reach out to me through that platform. Then pastors there will look into my teaching. This teaching is wrong. Okay, they will reach out to me. They will send me the email, your message. You will look at, you, pray, you draw pride. Because all this thing is pride. You draw pride, look into the teaching, see my correction. Oh, I think I'm wrong. You go back to your pulpit and correct yourself. Pastor, Pastor, Sam, and then he said that if this video is no longer, I will attach that his own. He said that there was a time he preached nonsense and somebody online corrected him. He quickly corrected him. He said, oh, I made a mistake. He went back and corrected it. Correct himself on the same pulpit. He did not correct the, the guy. No. So that is how it's supposed to be. But you guys pride. If they correct you, you call it attack. They attack me. They attack me. Even if the person did not condemn you or condemn whatever, you only say no to this teaching. That this your teaching is wrong. You say, oh, hey, this and that. Pastor, you guys should fear God. So there's nothing like, for me, there's nothing like body of Christ. In body of Christ, as in the one you guys are practicing, there's nothing like body of Christ. And that is why you see today, people are not really cool Christianity. Especially on social media, especially on Facebook. People are really cool Christianity. This one, this, this and that because of so much attack. Me that even creating this content, I'm attack, I'm fed up. It's not healthy. For me personally, it's not it's not healthy. At times, if I look at it, I say, Why, oh God, why what is all this, Pastor? You want to correct another pastor's message or correct another pastor? You are using bitterness, you are using abuse, you are using cause, you are using all sorts of things. And you call it correction? No, sir. Bible says we should correct in love. We must not attack somebody. So attack is different from correction. In correction, you will must you will never use abusive words. Never. In fact, anytime I see any pastor abusing another pastor in name of correction, I normally see the person as somebody that was brought up by mafia uh, father and mother, parents, mafia parents, brought up in the in, in ghetto, in the ghetto. In a family where they normally cause, 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 lay costs on children, abuse children. That is where you normally, they normally learn that thing. If you see, there's a, Dr. Ebed Amina can never lay costs on anybody or abuse any pastor. He can only say no to this teaching. He normally correct, he, he used to correct, eh? I'm, I have to be frank with you. His own correction is too much. But all that his corrections, he has never abuse any pastor at the cost of correcting him 
and the cause of that his teaching. I have took my time to watch his videos and his correction. I have never heard him say this stupid man, this foolish pastor. No. He normally say this teaching is wrong or giving uh, titan is fraud. He did not condemn you. He did not abuse you. He only said no to that your teaching. So that is how it's supposed to be. But not on pulpit. Pastors, anytime if you want to address any issue, please. Can you sit down in your house or in your office, on your office, not on pulpit? Correct that issue. Correct the error. And not to attack the pastor. Okay? Or use your pulpit. Me, I can't even, I can't attend church where the uh, cursing and cursing and laying cause of a thing, attack, attack is the order of the day. I can't attend such church. I can't. I'm sorry, but that is me. I can't. Because of my mental health, I have to save myself. So please stop preaching nonsense, pastors. Always study. Bible says study to show yourself approved. You don't study the word of God. You don't study books. You call yourself a pastor. Every day you are preaching the same thing. In 20 years time, you are still the same topic. Making the same mistake. Collecting tight. Manipulating people. Extorting from people. And you say somebody should not correct you. So please, it's good. What am I actually saying? What I'm saying is this. Number one. We don't have body of Christ until you guys come together and you in one unity. That is the only time you say your body of Christ. Number two, it's good to correct in love. That is what Bible says we should do. It's good to correct in love. Number three, they should organize, but not on social media or on your pulpit. So let's end here, child of God. Thank you guys for listening. We love you guys. I want to appreciate the speakers. This video did not target to defend their characters. It's under fair use. So credit to the source. See you guys next time. Shalom.